This lesson is going to be on blocking skills and taking your regular blocks from the Ishinro karate system, but this can apply to really any style, uh, and making them move from the basic to an intermediate and maybe even a more advanced level. So we're going to concentrate on the three main blocking areas, low, middle, and upper. And we'll start by talking about, in the Ishinru system, using the muscle to make the block. So for example, if we're doing a side block, the movement comes out this way. So the contact point is on the muscle side of the arm. Same for the head block, muscle here, same for the down block. Now, Master Shimabuku in developing Ishinru uh, thought that it was better to keep the contact point on the muscle and not do the final twisting out that you see other karate styles do. Uh, some people are saying that's because you're getting the two bones side by side on the arm, so that's a good place to make contact. But also, instead of, of having the uh, danger of a block hitting the opponent's arm too early and being fully twisted out, if you were doing the twisting block, then you're going to hit on the side of the bone. So even though some styles advocate blocking on the muscle and then twisting out, the timing on that is, is quite difficult. So without having to have the twist, that block coming across using the muscle and deflecting the opponent's strike uh, was gonna be blocking now against a padded area and less likely to hit on the bone. So that's where the side blocking and head blocking and down blocking with the muscle comes from for Ishinru Karate. Now, when you're first taught the blocks in Ishinru, you're taught to stack the hands on the side and have that as your originating point for your block. And it is a good way to keep it uh, simple and easy for beginners to learn. But overall, it's not really the best to, uh, to use in the future and to use as you uh, need it for self-defense because it's really got some drawbacks to it. When your hands come to the side, you are leaving a lot of your body uh, open and unprotected. So if your opponent strikes faster than you're expecting, well, that block might not get there in time. And you, you've got some body parts that are exposed, some of your vital areas. So when we have gotten the idea of the block mastered to a certain basic level, then we can step it up to doing some covering and some extra protection. So for example, if we're going to do a down block, a down block ends down, but we start it up higher, we start it up above and make our covering position or chambering position, if you want to call it that, more protective of as much of the body as possible. And even this hand coming up could be open as a deflection against a, a strike at the head. But we're covering and kind of uh, uh, giving ourselves as much protection as possible before we execute the block as well. Now, this covering the upper arm could cover an uh, upper level attack, and the lower arm could deflect the lower attack if they're shooting it a little sooner or a little quicker than you expected. So that lower arm could be looked at as an open block and as a parry down below, and then the other arm to clear it out of the way. So to get in the habit of the arms crossing before the block is a good thing because now you can cover your body and get the block down uh, as well. Covering the body can also be uh, a way to use your hips and your body behind it because as your arms come up, you can slightly turn away and then come back in as you do that block. So this is, is something to practice with both arms coming up. And those, that movement of both arms coming up is somewhat of a natural movement, a reflexive movement. If someone is striking at you unexpectedly, and that's typically how it happens, it, we would bring our arms up in a protective type of position. And so that in itself sets us up for the block. As we practice, we're doing it more formally, we're doing it more consciously, but the idea is the same, a covering of as much of the body as you can and then out for the block. So for a down block, the blocking hand will start higher and then the other hand will come down below. So covering up and then blocking this way. Now for a side block, it goes the other way because the blocking arm is traveling upward 
will start it down. So in this case, the blocking arm is down, the other arm is up. We're still getting that good coverage of the body, and then we can come out with the block. So covering and blocking, covering and blocking. When a student's been training for six months or a year and their basic movements are, are pretty good, adding in some of this covering and blocking uh, into your basics and into your kata can be a good thing. So here's the cover and then the block. Again, using the body as well, cover and block. Use a bit of a hip turn to get some more force into that block. Now, another block, of course, is the head block, and that one also has an upward movement. So the cover here, this hand now could be a defense against that punch coming to the head that maybe got there quicker than you expected. So you're blocking it and then finishing by knocking their arm away or maybe even striking them with that arm as well. So a block and either a second block or a block and a cover or a hit. So this covering motion sets you up for that, that head block. Now, as with any blocking move, you have to be relaxed to start it and then be tense and put some focus on it at the end. This is part of the, the um, snapping technique that Ishinro Karate is known for. So when we do a down block, we get that hand up, we use the hips and we get that snap. So it hits and has a bit of a bounce to it. So that's to uh, get enough outward hit to deflect their strike, but not to leave it out and to keep yourself open. So a block that snaps and then comes back. Same for a side block. Relax to start, cover, and get the snap. And use your body to turn into it, to turn in as you block this way. A snap. It's going to rebound slightly out and back. Now, head block, same idea. Relax, snap. It'll snap out and come back slightly. Covering first and then blocking. Covering and blocking. Now, these same principles will apply to an open hand side block, open hand down block. All of those can be thought of in the same way. So, Taking your blocking to the next level, you can put this into your katas as well. For example, if you're doing seisan kata, first move of the kata, if you stack your hands and go with your block here, well, again, you're leaving yourself open. But if you give a cover first, now you're still getting a good block. You're going to end up with that good block at the end, but you have a protection as you're starting. Sam chin kata, we have a lot of down blocks. So we don't want to do our down block just from a, a side chambered position because as we're coming up, we have everything open on the side here. So covering with the other hand and blocking down and then covering and blocking. And that low movement could also be that deflection and then the block, deflect and then block. So think about in your blocks where you can cover before you execute the move. Now, uh, this isn't something that you might teach to a brand new student because it's a little bit more complicated. It involves using both hands, using the body, getting that good snap behind it. So as an intermediate or advanced student, this is definitely something you should explore. Matt Dorsey signing off for Ishinru Insights.